Hey guys, Fishmonger here. I've been working a little bit lately on my simple GUI mining uh, program that works with the DSTM miner, and I wanted to share a couple of updates that I've made with it, and I'm probably going to be uploading to uh, my website tonight. As you can see, the old version is up on the screen right now, and is the one that's right here. Uh, it's version 1.1, and then the newest one, 1 1.2, is actually down here, and it adds a couple of some enhancements, features, I don't know what you want to call them, but basically I added a an option to start uh, when idle, so basically the program will just check to see, it's kind of like NiceHash Legacy has that option too, so you could run the program and basically if you just click uh, start with idle, and I'll show that in a second, um, but pretty much it'll start the miner up in the background after a set amount of time, um, and then basically if you move the mouse or the keyboard or whatever, like it'll stop the miner, so it's nice because you can kind of run and basically if you're on and off the computer or whatever, it'll kind of like um, bring the mining program back on and off automatically for you. I added a note or an option to start it with Windows. So basically that'll add a start um, menu entry basically to load up the miner uh, when Windows starts. Um, I added a it says list devices button. Oh, basically that's this guy right here, which basically just you know quickly tells you uh, what devices are available on your computer. So if you want to match them up, to the device uh, numbers here, you can do that pretty easily. I added a thermal, um, the thermal throttle option for the GPUs. So if you enable this, basically the miner will automatically start to throttle itself if for whatever reason you have a runaway thermal issue, maybe one of the fans breaks on your mining rig or something, and it starts to overheat, this will you know, potentially save your graphic card from totally frying out. And then basically an option to show um, the telemetry that basically is built into the DSTM. And all these options here, I mean, just to show you, you know, when you open up the, the DSTM miner, you know, it gives you all these options here, and all I did was basically just bury them right into the GUI itself. That's why, I mean, pretty much, all, well, except for, like, run with Windows and stuff like that, but a lot of these, like, the temp target is basically what this is, and the um, uh, list devices is just this button here, and then, uh, what else did I add? Oh, the telemetry is this guy right here. So, I mean, you know, I just built on what I've been doing, which is basically adding a GUI um, for this. And I did, and let me just get rid of this. I did um, also add, I had a, you know, I don't know, I rearranged a couple things. I'm not particularly happy with the way it looks right now, but it's functional, so that's the most important thing. Um, I resized some of these buttons here, and I made it so the they're a little bit smaller, so another seven profiles instead of five, so there's a little bit more room there. Uh, but just to kind of show you, so for instance, if I bring up Mining Pool Hub, and um, the, this is, you know, my, my login for Mining Pool Hub, if I click on Start When Idle, all right, and, you know, basically I'm not idle, it won't start. But the instant I let it sit and starts to idle, there's a, underneath that, you can see it says wait time in seconds is 10. So what it'll basically do is wait 10 seconds before it starts to load the miner up. And as you can see right now, the miner is running. It's in quiet mode. So that's why it's not actually bringing up a, a box to show all the stuff, but it's grabbing the data from that box or the command window, and it's uh, putting it down in the uh, miner status info on the bottom there. Um, and then, you know, if I unidle by like moving the mouse like that, basically it closes the miner. It tells you that, you know, something happened or whatever, and it's closed. And then, of course, it'll just resume again after another, in this case, 10 seconds or a set amount of time, whatever you want. It'll load the miner back up again and start running. So the nice thing about this is you can, you know, use this now. And, I mean, I can essentially just minimize this and have it run in the background while I'm doing other stuff. Let's say I'm, you know, watching a YouTube video or whatever, or I'm just fiddle-farting around doing odd things on the computer. I can load this up and I can set it to, like, a, you know, a small number, like 5 or 10 seconds. And literally, like, let's say I start watching a video and I'm watching, like, Gamers Nexus or something, and uh, like he's, he starts uh, doing a review on, like, a case, and he can do, like, a 15 or 20-minute review on a case. And I get into it, you know? Um, it'll mine for 15 or 20 minutes in the background while I'm doing that, and I don't have to remember to, you know, keep turning the miner on and off or even have the miner on. Or let's say I just want to start up a game, like, right now. Like, I, like let's say I feel like playing Warcraft. Um, I could open up Warcraft and then instantly start playing, and the miner will automatically shut itself off. So it's a nice, efficient way to run the DSTM, you know, on whatever kind of, directly on whatever kind of pool you want, like, you know, Mining Pool Hub or, uh, um, what was some of the other ones? Uh, oh, Nano Pool or, you know, directly to NiceHash, actually, even, you can mine directly to there. Um, it's a nice little feature. I thought that was kind of cool. 
Um, I did add the, let's see, run with Windows here. And just to show you this, um, if you look at, okay. So this is the full directory for the startup. It's really long, but for the startup uh, folder for Windows. So when you click on this button here, this is run with Windows, it essentially just makes a shortcut and puts it directly into that folder. Um, and this is, right now, it's linking to the executable, um, or the exe, oh, look, it's going to start mining again. Let me turn this off. Um, it's going to start, it's going to link to the executable. So if you just download the script and you don't have it compiled, it won't work. Um, but then also, if you take this off, it removes that. You know, pretty simple, right? It just deletes that file entry there. Um, so that was kind of nice. And then, like I said, I have this GPU Thermal Max in here. So, for instance, if I set this to, let's say, 50, I think that should be kind of low, uh, and I start, um, it's going to use a function that's built into DSTM to automatically throttle the the GPU to make it so it doesn't overheat. So, and you can see there, it says GPU reach temperature target, enabling temperature controller, and it will automatically... Uh, limit the speed of the, the mining software itself to make it so it doesn't have an issue. You can see there it says 51 degrees Celsius. It's got a little exclamation point. That's kind of letting you know, letting you know that you've reached a uh, thermal point there. It's funny. I'm still getting 149 solutions a second. This is my GTX 1050 that's in my main computer. Uh, let me see if I have Afterburner up. I don't have Afterburner up. That might be part of it here. Let's see. Um, I can actually take Afterburner up and innate and bring my fan speed up just to show you I can get rid of the throttling here if I do this so I just kick my fans up to a hundred percent so now this should go a lot lower than 51 you can see it's gonna really start to dip down here the instant this starts to dip down into a safe temperature or you know that is whatever you set it to be um, the throttling will go off and then it'll resume its normal operation and I guess it's it's kind of toasty in my room right now. I have my door shut because I'm recording. And I got, you know, the mining rigs over there. And uh, it's a good 75 degrees Fahrenheit in here. It feels like the summertime. Even though there's a nor'easter coming in, it's kind of rough. Um, maybe I'll get below 50 degrees. Maybe I won't. I might have to actually bring my power limit down here. Let's see. Let me bring the power down and I'll, I'll stop overclocking this. This will definitely dip below. Come on, baby, dive. I really don't have a lot of airflow in my case. I have one of those, uh, not a mini ITX case. I mean, actually, I can fit a full-size ATX motherboard in there, but it is, like, top to bottom crammed in there. Like, that's it. It's not getting any, not getting anything uh, bigger than an ATX motherboard in there. But it's not an ATX case. It's like a, a half mid-tower case. I don't know what you want to call it. But, man, what is going on? How come I cannot? Let me underclock this and this, too. I'll bring this down. And I'll bring you down. Lowest I can go. I gotta get below. There we go. Okay, so now it's dipping down below 48 degrees. And you can see instantly there it stopped uh, the throttling. It got rid of the exclamation point. And, you know, 50 is kind of low. I just set that to something to be an example. Um, so I've got that in there. And then as far as the, the telemetry, uh, let's see if I can show you here. If I click on this, it's going to open up in my... Oh, because, hold on a second. Here you go. I don't have Google uh, Chrome here set up as my default browser. Basically, it'll open up in your default browser the IP address that's the default for the telemetry in the miner. So, for instance, if I go to Mining Pool Hub and I hit Start now on this, what it's going to do is it's always DSTM has always had this built-in option to basically run some of the data directly to a web browser window, um, and it should automatically pop in here once this. Uh, oh, do I have idling on? Actually, that shouldn't be doing that. I have to look at that. Even though it's a start with idle on, I think what it's doing is it's detecting movement. Yeah, see, it's not doing it now. I'll have to take a look at that. A little bit of a glitch, but you can see here this popped up. And it's showing the uh, the information here for the card. And, of course, the GTX 1050s don't output anything that's really important. Like, it won't tell you the watts or anything like that, which kind of suck. 
Um, but it gives you that ability, you know, to, to see some of the other data. If you have other cards, like the 1060s, I, knew, I know do that. 1070s do that, 1080s as well. So that's pretty much that. So, um, like I said, I'm going to be updating this, throwing it up on the website. I feel like I, there's really not much more I kind of want to add to it right now. I would like the ability, and I don't know if anybody can help me out with this, but I, I need like an email uh, software or um, an IM kind of software, you know, even something like a Twitter, something where I can trigger to remotely send like an email. Like, okay, you know, like with NiceHash or other kind of things, like it'll monitor your workers, and then when they go down, um, it'll basically send you an email to say, hey, your workers are down. I'd like to be able to do something like that with this, but without having to use um, any kind of uh, server or website to be able to handle that in interaction. I'd like a standalone little piece of software that could basically a GUI miner can uh, call to and say, hey, you know, text this guy or send an email to this guy or do something for this because his miner's down. Um, I'd like to be able to add that. So if anybody knows any kind of software that I'd be able to do that with fairly simply, you know, let me know, and I'd be very gracious. So I am up right now on Warmain, uh, server 2.4.3 on one of the Burning Crusade servers. I forgot what it's called, Out the Medivh or something like that. Um, and I'm fishing with Fishmonger right now. It's working out great. Actually, all I'm doing is using the Wrath of the Lich King profile. Um, I put it in Wrath of the Lich King mode, and it's working on here for Burning Crusade. So either not much changed in fishing between the Burning Crusade and Wrath of the Lich King that made a big difference, or at least on Warmain with the way they do the fishing, not much changed, and Fishmonger is able to work on both of them great. So if you play on uh, any of the Burning Crusade servers on Warmain, you'll be set up and ready to go with Fishmonger in no time, because as you can see here, I'm just standing over on Crystal Lake right now with a color sensitivity of 85. It's splashing nice and bright. I'm catching up some raw long jaw mud snappers to be cooking them up later for a feast. I'll be feasting with all my friends in Goldshire. Actually, no, I'll probably be vendoring them. Actually, I'm probably not even playing this guy. I don't really care for the Burning Crusade that much, but I know some people do, but I don't. So Fishmonger is available to download on the website uh, along with the GUI miner. And if there's anything anybody wants to see in the future um, added to these programs or you have any requests or things you'd like changed or complaints or compliments, you know, send me a message down below or send me an email and I'll see what I can do to help you out. And I do want to add in that blah. How many times am I going to go blah? There's so much editing in this. This is ridiculous. I'm fucking hot. It's hot in here. I want to say thanks again for watching the video. We're expecting some snow up here in the Northeast. Uh, last time I checked, 8 to 12 inches. And then, of course, I checked again on another site. I said 1 to 3 inches. So it's going to be really interesting to see uh, what's going to happen with this. I'm about an hour north of Philadelphia. So I, I don't think we're going to get that much snow. I'd be surprised if we get 3 inches, to be honest, based on what I saw on the weather forecast there. Um, but if you don't hear from me in a while, it's probably because I'm snowed in. So wish me luck. Have a good one.